Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Akash. And in this era of digitalization, there are loads of apps in the market for everyone's needs, which means that there are tons of options in the market for people trying to seek extra productivity. But I'm here to help you out with some productivity apps which not only provide value, but are free and minimalistic. So let's start with our first app, which is also my favorite one in this list, Google Calendar. I know it's so basic that you might say, oh, Akash, it's ridiculous. Like, how can a calendar enhance our productivity? But if you somehow know this book, Deep Work by Carl Newport, there's a point in here where Carl says that in order to be more efficient with your time, you've got to block out time for all the important tasks for the day. And the format he gave looks something like this. And yeah, I made it by hand. So what you really have to do is think of what are the important tasks for the day. Let's say you have to hit the gym from 7 to 9 in the morning, block it out. Then let's say... At least the girl who came was free. So yeah, there was I. Then let's say you have to study from 11 to 2, block it out. Then lastly, let's say you have to work on an assignment which is due this weekend, block it out. This thing actually works, but look at the enormous amount of time you have to spend in order to get something like that. In addition, if there's some changes in your plan, it will be screwed. But all the disadvantages of making this on paper are the advantages you'll get to enjoy on Google Calendar. Take a look at this. Here I can make all the time block-ins, plus I have the privilege to make any changes and I get to enjoy all the benefits from Carl Newport's system of scheduling. You can also instruct it to notify you anytime before the happening of the event and this looks really clean comparing to the one which was made by hand. And it's not the end of the things you can do on Google Calendar, but I'll show them in some future video. Next up, we have Notion. You might have heard me calling this app fancy, but this is my most used app in the day after YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, and then Notion, I guess, yeah. Notion is a really different app when you deal in some business and use it for databases and evaluation and stuff, but normal people like us can also benefit from this app. So the way I use Notion is for A, my studies, and B, my YouTube. Let me show you my Notion. So here we are, and the first thing I'd like to show is my study section. So when I was in 12th standard, I used to hide economics. I still do, even in CA. So what I did a month before exam was I used to sit down down, go through the chapter and write down all the topics from the chapter which were important. This technique is called scoping the subject. I used to write all this stuff in toggles and then I used to just go through a topic and blur it out under its respective toggle. But what's the purpose of this toggle thing? After I was done with all the chapters, all there left was revision and the best way to revise is to test yourself. So I used to go to this page, check out the question, deeply think about it and try to answer as much as I could and after that I used to take a look at the answer and see what bits I forgot and what bits I got wrong. It can be really useful if you want to make notes from the start of the semester, otherwise note making isn't advisable whatsoever. Now for my YouTube, I have this page called YouTube where I keep track of all my videos. Here I rank them between bad, good and great and next to it are the stages which the videos are. If I'm in the middle of somewhere and I get some video idea, I just take out my phone and put it in the list. And if I'm free, the productive guy in me likes to write scripts because some ideas come only for some seconds and you always regret it after you lose them. This is most of the stuff I do on Notion right now, but I'll be trying to learn more and teach you more. So if you're interested, you can subscribe. So app on our list is an app called OneSec. This app can save you hours of unintentional scrolling. I recently started using this app and it's genuinely good. Like if you're struggling with some social media addiction and you always find yourself just picking up your phone and going on Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat without any reason, you can really benefit from this app. What this app does is every time you try to open a certain app, it pops up and asks you to take a deep breath and then asks you if you'd like to continue on the app or not. And if the opening of the app was intentional, then you might wanna go ahead, but if it was unintentional, then the smooth interruption can really help you a lot. Moreover, it also shows you the number of times you tried to open the app in the last 24 hours, and it's not just for your phones, 
You can also add it to your browser and it'll act the same way. Next up we have Instapaper. So this is an app where you can save all your articles for later. Anytime you come across some interesting article, you can save it in here and you can also highlight some stuff which lies here in the notes section. You can also send all your email newsletters to Instapaper and if you can't read them, you can ask the app to read it for you. Although it's the annoying computer voice which is the same as the read aloud sound from Chrome but it's manageable. Editing archives this side and I just found out that this app can actually summarize it for you like whatever you're reading the article the newsletter whatever it can actually summarize it for you which can come into handy. Now let's get back to the video. Whenever I'm somewhere out and I don't want to waste my time scrolling I read some side articles from Instapaper and you always get some knowledge from these sort of stuff so it's a win-win situation. The last one on this list is Amazon Kindle. Well Kindle? Productivity? Well, yeah, depends on the user, but if you find paperbacks somewhat expensive or you just travel a lot and you find it very difficult to carry and read paperbacks alongside or you just like sleeping in bed, everyone likes sleeping in bed. If you like reading in bed and you, in order to read every next page, you have to turn around then you can really benefit from this app. Plus, if you ever find yourself out of your house and you want to read your book, then you've got full access. And that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, then do give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more productivity tips. And what are your favorite productivity apps? Let me know in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.